Welcome to TeachMeAuto.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to change the front brakes on this 2007 Toyota Camry LE. That's right, it's important that your brakes be in top working order, not only for the safety of yourself and the occupants in your car, but anybody else that might be on the road as well. That's right, Joe. Now we're going to go over the tools you'll need to perform this job. We'll need a jack and two jack stands and two wheel chocks. We need two new brake rotors and a new set of brake pads. These are ceramic pads and also the hardware. We'll need some brake fluid, some high temperature caliper grease, some brake cleaner, a pair of hose clamp pliers, a large C-clamp, thread lock. We'll need a 17 millimeter socket for the caliper bolts, a 14 millimeter socket for the slide bolts, and a 13 millimeter socket for the bolts to remove the rotors. And these are the bolts. We have an 8 millimeter liner wrench, a 17 millimeter thin wrench to hold the slide nut. We also need a 21 millimeter socket to loosen and remove the lug nuts and a special adapter to remove the lug, locking lug nut. A torque wrench, a bungee cord to hold the caliper, a brake bleeder kit, a shop lot and safety glasses, some paper towels, and a drain pan to catch any extra brake fluid. Before we jack up the vehicle, we need to set the emergency brake and put wheel chocks behind both rear tires. To remove the locking lug nut, we'll use a special adapter. This adapter is usually located in the vehicle's glove box. Once the locking lug nut is loosened up, we'll remove the adapter and use our 21 millimeter socket to loosen up the rest of the lug nuts. Now we'll move over to the other side and do the exact same thing. Now to raise up the vehicle, we'll position the floor jack under the vehicle's frame and lift the vehicle. Once the front tires are off the ground, we slide our jack stand into place under the frame. Then we'll move to the other side and do the exact same thing. With the vehicle safety support on jack stands, we're going to go ahead and remove the two front tires. We slide the tire off the vehicle and we put the lug nuts in the holes on the rim just for safekeeping. Then we'll slide those tires under the vehicle. Then we move to the other side and do the exact same thing. Putting the tires under the vehicle not only gets them out of our way, gives us a little extra safety in case the vehicle falls off the jack stands. Now we're going to turn our wheel to the side we're going to start with. In this case we're starting on the passenger side. Then we'll use our hose clamp pliers to clamp the brake line. Then we remove the dust cover off the bleeder screw. We attach our 8 millimeter line wrench. We put our brake bleeder kit on and then we loosen up the bleeder screw. Then we position our large C clamp onto the caliper and slightly compress the piston. As you can see, brake fluid will come out. This will allow easy removal of the caliper. Now we tighten up our bleeder screw, remove our bleeder kit and our 8mm wrench and reattach the dust cover so we don't lose it. We're going to use our 17mm thin wrench to hold the nut on the caliper slide and our 14mm socket and ratchet 
to remove the caliper slide bolt. Remove to the bottom and do the same thing. Once the bolts are removed, we can slide our caliper off and we'll tie it up using our bungee cord. This takes pressure off the brake line. Now, we remove our brake pads by first removing our anti rattle clips. First, we remove our outer brake pad. And then our inner brake pad. Now we're going to remove the caliper mounting bolts. We need a 17 millimeter socket and ratchet. Once we have the bolts removed, we slide the mounting bracket out of the way. Now we're going to remove our rotors. We Screw in those two bolts we showed you earlier into the two holes on the rotor. We use our 13 millimeter socket and ratchet and tighten up the bolts alternating from side to side. As you tighten up the bolts, the rotor will pop loose. Now we're going to reinstall our new rotor and we'll use a lug nut to hold the rotor in place. Then we'll clean off any old grease or oil with a, some brake cleaner and a clean rag. Remember to clean the outside and the inside. And then we're going to use our new mounting hardware. First you need to match up the new hardware with the old. and then slide the new hardware into place on the caliper holder. Now we're going to use some high temperature caliper grease on our caliper slide pins. Now before we reinstall a caliper mounting bracket, we're going to put a little thread lock on our caliper mounting bracket bolts. Slide the caliper mounting bracket back into place and reinsert our caliper mounting bracket bolts. Tighten them up by hand and we'll use our 17 millimeter socket and ratchet. Then we need to torque these bolts to 79 foot-pounds. Then we're going to get ready to reinstall our new brake pads. First we'll install our brake wear indicator clips on the new brake pads. And then we'll slide our new brake pads into the caliper holder. Starting with the outer and then we'll install the inner. Once we have the pads installed we're going to install some high temperature caliper grease on the back of both pads. Now we're going to install our anti-rattle clips into the two small holes on the top and bottom of each brake pad. Now 
Then we're going to get ready to compress our piston and the caliper. We'll first slide our 8mm wrench over the bleeder screw. Then we'll attach our bleeder kit. Then we'll use an old brake pad to press against the piston and the caliper. And then we'll use our large C-clamp to push against the brake pad and compress the piston until it's flush inside the caliper. Now we'll tighten up our bleeder screw. We'll slide our caliper into place. Then we're going to use a little Loctite on our caliper slide pin bolts. Now we'll put the bolts in to the caliper slide pins. And we'll tighten it up with our 14 millimeter ratchet and socket. Now we use our 17 millimeter thin wrench and our torque wrench to torque down the bolts to 25 foot pounds. Once that's done, we'll remove our hose clamp pliers. Then we'll turn our wheel to the driver's side and repeat what we did on the passenger side. First, we use our hose clamp pliers to clamp the brake line, remove our dust cover, insert our 8 millimeter line wrench, and our brake bleeder kit. Loosen up the brake bleeder. Then we'll compress our piston. Once you have the piston compressed, we'll tighten up the bleeder screw, remove the brake bleeder kit, rinse all the dust cover. Now we're going to remove our caliper slide pins. And we'll slide our caliper out of place and support it with our bungee cord. Remove our anti-rattle clips. Then we'll slide our brake pads out of the way. Then we'll use our 17 millimeter wrench to remove our caliper mounting bracket. With the mounting bracket out of the way, we use our two bolts to remove our rotor using our 13 millimeter socket and ratchet. We'll reinstall our new rotor, hold it in place with a lug nut, and we'll clean the rotor with our brake cleaner and a clean rag. Then we're going to replace our hardware on the caliper mounting bracket. Now we're going to use the high temperature caliper grease on our slide pins. Clean off any extra grease with a rag. Then we're going to use thread lock on our caliper mounting bracket bolts. Slide the caliper mounting bracket back into place. Tighten up the bolts. And remember we torque these to 79 foot pounds. Now we're going to install our wear indicator clips on our new brake pads. These clips are designed to cause a screeching sound when your brake pads get low. This little metal tip here will come in contact with your rotor when the pad becomes worn. Then we're going to reinstall our new brake pads starting with the outer one. 
and then we'll install our inner one. Then we're going to install our anti-rattle clips and the holes on top and bottom of the brake pads. Then we're going to install our high temperature caliper grease on the back of each brake pad. Then we're going to compress the piston inside the brake caliper by loosening up the bleeder valve. We install our brake bleeder kit. We'll compress our piston using a no brake pad. Once it's compressed, We'll tighten up the bleeder screw, reinstall our dust cover, and slide the caliper into place. We'll use a little thread lock on the slide pin bolts. Then we'll torque these to 25 foot-pounds. Then we're going to remove our hose clamp pliers. We want to make sure our bleeder screws are tight before we bleed the brakes. We need to do this on both sides. Before we bleed the brakes, we'll check and see our brake, check our brake fluid level. If it is low, We'll add a little brake fluid. Now to get ready to bleed the brakes, we'll need our 8mm wrench, our brake bleeder kit, have your partner press down the brake pedal, go to the caliper, loosen up the bleeder screw, watch for bubbles in the brake line and tighten up the bleeder screw. Remove the foot off the brake pedal and then press it back down again. Repeat this process until there's no more bubbles in the brake fluid. Moving to the other side, check your brake fluid level and top it off. Again, we remove our dust cover, install our 8mm line wrench, our brake bleeder kit, have your partner depress the brake pedal, loosen up the bleeder screw, check for bubbles, and then tighten the bleeder screw back up. Have your partner release the brake pedal and press it back down. And repeat this process until there's no more bubbles in the brake fluid. When you're finished bleeding the brakes, remember to top off your brake fluid in your master cylinder. Then we'll get ready to install our front tires. We tighten up our lug nuts by hand. Then we'll snug them down with our 21 millimeter socket and ratchet. Do this on both sides. With the lug nut snug down, we'll go ahead and lower the vehicle onto the ground.
with a vehicle on the ground, we're going to torque our lug nuts to 76 foot-pounds. Torque in a crisscross pattern. And last, we remove the wheel chocks behind both rear tires. Well, we hope this video will help you change the brakes on your 2007 Toyota Camry LE. Yeah, as you can see, it wasn't that difficult. If you just follow the step-by-step -step instructions, you'll be fine. And we appreciate any comments you may have. Send the comments to comments at teachmeall.com. And as always, thank you for visiting teachmeall.com and have a great day.